welcome to part one of You Are Awesome, the book that we've been talking about in Assembly. Find your confidence and dare to be brilliant at almost anything. A wonderful book by Matthew Saeed. So this is not a storybook. This is a non-fiction book. This is kind of like a self-help book or a book that will give you lots of hints and tips and hopefully um, inspire you a little bit. It's a great book to read as an e-reader like this because of the way that it's been laid out that makes it particularly interesting to follow with all kinds of different types of text and things. So I hope that you enjoy it. This is part one. We're going to read it in five parts. All about awesomeness. Getting good at stuff is not as hard as you might think. In fact, anyone can get much better at almost anything. But you're busy, right? Tell me about it. There's so much to do. Homework, sports, time with friends, keeping up with Instagram. Finding the time to do everything can be a challenge. Trying to be good at everything can be even harder. That's where this book comes in. It's going to let you into the secret of being awesome and tell you things that people at the top of their game know about success. If you've got a friend who seems to ace exams with no effort or a brother who is annoyingly better than you at tennis, or even if you just feel like you're not quite sure what you're best at, then this book is for you. What's involved? Well, we're going to get up close and personal with success, delve inside our brains to understand how we learn new skills and equip you with the strategies to build your confidence and fulfil your potential. We'll bust some myths along the way about what it takes to stand out from the crowd, share some stories of how super successful people make it to the top and provide all the support and advice you need to achieve your personal awesomeness. So if you're up for the challenge, then let's get started. We haven't got any time to waste if you want to be an awesome vlogger, pianist, physicist, tennis ace, chess grandmaster, deep sea diver, heart surgeon, prime minister, computer hacker, MI6 agent, footballer, mathematician, archaeologist, teacher, plumber, barrister, barista, chef, travel writer, dog groomer, TV presenter, basketball player, rock star, astronaut or cheese sprayer. No, me either and that last one, but apparently it's a thing and you're going to be, if you're going to be one, you may as well be awesome at it. Ah, and by the way, that perfect selfie, that great maths results or the amazing piano performance, they were lying if they said they didn't practice. From Kid Average to Kid Awesome, Chapter One. Imagine a very ordinary kid living in a completely ordinary street on the outskirts of a totally ordinary town. You can probably see where we're going with this already. This kid, let's call him Kid A, probably spends his weekends hanging out in the ordinary shopping centre and then goes home to eat an ordinary dinner in his ordinary house. Yep, you've got it. It's all fairly um, ordinary. As for the town's famous sons and daughters, you know, people born in the area who went on to do great things and change the world, well, there really aren't many, apart from a TV weatherman and a guy who might, as no one's quite sure yet, have invented a crucial bit of the tumble dryer in the 1980s. But that's it. Honestly, this place is duller than a dull day in Dullsville. So I hear you asking, why are we beginning this book here? What's the point of zoning in on Kid A in his ordinary bunk bed in his ordinary bedroom? Well, that's exactly the point. Kid A is ordinary, just like any other kid, perhaps just like you. But something amazing is about to happen. Kid A's life is about to change forever. Now, he isn't going to be bitten by a radioactive spider or struck by a thunderbolt that gives him superpowers. Instead, returning from school one day, Kid A's mum and dad are outside the house waiting for him. They're up to something. Kid A's sure of it. His mum is hopping backwards and forwards like an over and excited frog and his dad is smiling. Yes, smiling. And Kid A knows that this can only mean one thing. They've got some kind of surprise in store. Close your eyes, squeals his mum mid-leap. Kid A complies, but inside is seriously hoping this doesn't turn out to be anything like the last surprise they pulled. The one with the trampoline, which ended up with embarrassing call out to the fire brigade. With great excitement, Dad hauls open the garage door. 
Right, you can look now. For a moment, Kid A thinks he's missing something. His parents stand beside him, beaming with pride. Uh, it's a table, says Kid A, sounding puzzled. I know it looks like an old table, said his dad, springing forward. But see, it's a table tennis table. Before Kid A can respond, his mum thrusts a table tennis bat and ball into his hand. And before he can say ping pong paddle, he's facing his dad across the net. What are you waiting for? His mum shrieks, now close to a mild frenzy. His dad is also looking positively dangerous, like he might injure himself or someone else in close vicinity. He's doing wild warm-up stretches with his legs and bending into positions that Kid A has never seen before, except maybe the ones you might see in a pretzel. Come on, let's have a go, his dad shouts from the other side of the table. Kid A stares over the net at his dad. His evening really has taken an unexpected turn. But in spite of this, he holds the bat ready and waits for his dad to serve. And this is where we press the pause button on the story. Why? Because Kid A has reached a big fork in his life. Not that kind of fork. The kind where he fancies he faces a choice between two paths. One path will see him carry on living his ordinary, unremarkable life. The other path will take him on an awesome and incredible journey. And it all comes down to what happens next. But let's save the best until last and begin with the path that leads to Kid A becoming Kid Average. OK, back to the story. Concentrating hard, Kid Average waits slightly longer than he thought he might have to. His dad went back into the house to get his lucky sports headband. Next thing he knows, the ball comes whizzing across the net like a bullet and Kid Average misses it completely. Well, that was just unlucky, he thinks. Dad seems good at this. Maybe he just got lucky, though. Or maybe it was those stretches or that headband. Kid Average tries again. This time, the ball slices sideways, bounces off the table and spins out of the garage door. Never mind, says his dad. Try again. Turning a fancy shade of beetroot, Kid Average is not exactly enjoying this. He makes another attempt at serving. This time, the ball scrapes over the net, only for his father to return the serve with such force that the ball comes back at him like a missile. It continues with his end of the table. It connects with his end of the table and then hits him full force on the elbow. Come on, buddy, shouts his dad, still jumping about like a pro. You can do better than that. Kid Average collects the ball from the garage floor and considers asking for the headband to use as a bandage. He shuffles back to the table, but his heart just isn't in it. As far as he's concerned, he couldn't fa he could face further humiliation from his dad, who seems to have found his inner Olympian, or be in his bedroom with his games guns console. Just then, the console wins. I've had enough, he says, setting the bat on the table. But thanks anyway. For a while, his parents blame each other. Or rather, his mum blames his dad for being too competitive. But it quickly becomes clear that Kid Average just doesn't have the fire in him to take up the challenge. But I'm no good at it, protests Kid Average when his dad suggests a game the following week. And to be fair, his bruises have only just started to fade from the last time. Why don't you practice with Andrew, his mum suggests. This is Kid Average's worst nightmare. Never mind his dad, his brother is more competitive than Mo Farah in the 10,000 metre final. There is no way he wants a pasting from that muppet who's bound to tell everyone at school about it too. No thanks, sighs Kid Average, who takes himself off to his bedroom. He's bound to be better than me anyway. I've had enough. I'm no good at it. He's bound to be better than me. Time goes by. His dad takes up golf and the table tennis table in the garage began, begins to gather dust. His mum piles his dad's new golf clubs on it for a while before she gets fed up with the lack of space. Eventually, she takes it apart, stacks it to one side and sells it to their next door neighbour for an absolute bargain. Meanwhile, Kid Average continues to shuffle through life. His school report suggests he could try harder, but it never happens. In his eyes, in his eyes, challenges are obstacles and definitely best avoided. Instead, he ignores his parents' pleas to get out more and rarely leaves his room. There, with his console in hand and snacks within easy reach, he sets about, well, doing nothing. It's fair to say that Kid Average is living up to his name. 
but one day he's surfing through sports videos looking for something to pass the time when he comes across a live stream of the National Table Tennis Championship finals. Seeing this brings his not-so-amazing ping-pong debut back to him. The match is taking place inside a huge hall watched by hundreds of spectators. The camera zooms in on the player with the ball in hand. He's totally focused and completely calm, as if perhaps he's been working towards this moment for a long time. Kid Average sits up straight. His attention is glued to the screen because the player on the screen in front of him, preparing to serve for the championship, looks strikingly familiar. Kid Awesome. Now, let's rewind to the point where Kid A's story reached that fork in the path. He's facing his dad across the net, remember? Kid A's first attempt at hitting the ball goes seriously badly wrong. The second try is worse, and the third attempt results in a bruise the side of a table tennis ball on his elbow. Unlike King Kid Average, however, he doesn't give up. Instead, he feels some kind of knot in his stomach. At first, he thinks it might be the two chocolate bars he had at afternoon break, but that's not it. It's something else. He realises that he wants to put up a fight to get a bit better, to show his dad that he can win at least one point off him. So he knows he's got some improving to do. Actually, that's the understatement of the millennium. He has got absolutely stacks of improving to do. But instead of putting down the bat and burying his head back into his laptop, he tells himself that if he tries, in time, he might just do a bit better. After all, what's the worst that can happen? And at the very least, his mum might dial down the excitable frog moves. So rather than quitting right there and then, he picks up the ball and tries again and again and again and again and again and again and again. OK, so you get the point. An hour later, he's yet to score a point against his dad, but he's quite a lot better. There have been no further ping pong induced injuries and he's learning from the experience. Every now and then, he even surprises himself with a half decent return serve. And there was a moment when he also put a shot past his dad. Now, admittedly, Kid A is not going to win any prizes yet, but he's making minor improvements and is definitely a little bit better than totally useless. And what's more, he's quite enjoying it. It turns out that this surprise was one of his parents' best ever ideas. While Kid Average has decided he's no good, given up completely and gone to bed, Kid Awesome is determined and he sticks to it. He really wants to improve, not just by a little bit, but by as far as he can take things. Kid Awesome is set on becoming the best table tennis player he can and he realises that this all comes down to how often he can get in the garage to practice. He starts to love the game so much that he has even started thinking about asking his brother to help him practice. Strangely, Kid Awesome has stopped minding that his brother might be better than him. Well, that's not quite true. He minds a bit less because the fact that his brother is better forces Kid Awesome to work even harder at the game. Together, the pair put in so many hours at the table that their dad has to check on them to make sure that everything is still in one piece. But thanks to spending so much time with a bat in hand, Kid Awesome starts to learn from his mistakes and picks up skills that no amount of stretching from his dad or brother could ever hope to match. Word sped spreads through the street that table tennis is pretty good fun. And what happens in an ordinary town when someone gets something new? Yep, you guessed it. Everyone wants one. Before Kid Awesome knows it, the whole area is wild for ping pong. The table tennis club at school is inundated with new members. By now, with plenty of practice, after school, most weekends and holidays, Kid Awesome is beyond good. He joins a regional team on a winning streak and then, to the delight of his parents, their table tennis purchase now seeming like a 24 karat gold idea, his brother and everyone who has played a role in this long journey, he makes it to the final of the national championships. The match is streamed live. Kid Awesome finds himself under the spotlights and under pressure, but he's ready for this moment. He's been training hard and all his preparations are going to plan. It's a tough match. 
his greatest challenge yet. Kid Awesome's opponent proves to be skillful and a bit cunning, but he doesn't lose his cool. He battles hard and finds himself at match point. All of a sudden, with the audience holding their breath, he realises just how far he's come. For years now, he's been getting up early to practice and loving the challenge of improving his game. With this in mind, he serves for the match and wins. Kid Awesome punches the air. It's a dream come true. And that's the thing about dreams. They can come true. But unlike all those fairy tales we hear about, they don't happen by accident. That's where the book in your hands comes in. It's all about how we turn our dreams into something we really can achieve. Now, we're not talking about those fantasy types of dream where your school is invaded during a pop for zombie apocalypse. We aren't even talking about major dreams. You know, the one where you receive an Oscar for directing a Hollywood blockbuster or you've been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for your services to international diplomacy. No, we're talking about the dreams you have of landing that part in the school play, of finally getting into the athletics team, of hitting all the right notes in choir practice, or even improving significantly in the next maths test. Whatever your ambition, even if it seems out of your reach right now, this book is all about how to fulfil your potential and achieve it. This might seem like a bold promise, but there's one more thing you need to know about Kid Awesome. That boy who chose the path to becoming a champion, it was me. So that is Matthew Said. He was actually a table tennis champion. So here we are, look, secret of success. My name is Matthew. Some years ago, I became the British number one table tennis player. I even represented Great Britain in the Olympics, which is worthy of a fist bump, right? Now, it would be very easy for me to pretend that this was down to natural talent. I could boast that I was born with lightning quick reactions. That would be a fib. Yet, yeah, when I won the crown, I had a reputation for speed, gutsiness and quick wits. But I cannot honestly say that I arrived in this world with a ping pong bat in my hand. My background is as unremarkable as I described. I was very average. An OK kid, but with nothing to hint that I could become an elite sports person. Nothing to suggest I could be awesome. The truth is, I had to learn the skills I needed to become the best. Not only that, I had to start from scratch. Yes, my parents were table tennis fans, which gave me a small head spa start over my friends. But I had to practice with passion and dedication to learn my skills. It was hard work with a lot of setbacks on the way, but I gained valuable lessons from every moment. So let's forget those types of stories that we hear about people being born gifted or naturally talented when it comes to explaining how someone got really good at something. I'm here to reveal the truth and the fact that it's possible for anyone to get really good at almost anything. And that includes you. So let's break down the factors that earned me the crown as the table tennis prince. And I'm warning you now. It's all about grit, not glamour. Number one, the table. My parents are still unable to explain why they decided to fill their garage with a full-size table tennis table, a super deluxe model with gold lettering, since you ask. Even so, I can be sure there weren't many kids that had one, which gave me a head start. It didn't make me instantly better than anyone else, though. I simply started practising earlier than most. As time went by, people began to say I was a genius with the bat and that I had a natural talent. But they hadn't seen the table in my garage and they definitely hadn't seen how many rainy Sundays and evenings after school I'd spent in there, tirelessly batting the bat, bat the ball back and forth in an effort to improve. Makes you think, doesn't it? Is there someone awesome that you are that you think is just naturally brilliant at something? I wonder what they've got in their garage. Number two, my older brother. My brother is awesome. And luckily, he is also highly competitive. True story. He used to make me play snooker with three balls missing from the table. That way, if I beat him, he could tell his friends that he hadn't really lost. He reckoned it wasn't an actual match if some of the balls were missing. Crazy times. But it wasn't just snooker. He wanted to be the best at table tennis too. And he was awesome. Did I mention that? So he became my ready to go at any moment kind of practice partner. He was as available as a 24 hour McDonald's. 
So with a table in the garage, we would duel before school and spent hours in the evenings whipping the ball back and forth. I can't lie, I oh, I've lost my I can't I can't lie, I secretly wanted to dominate each match and leave my brother begging for mercy, and I've no doubt he wanted to do the same to me. So we're battling it out together, testing each other's reflexes and experimenting with new moves. Without realising it, he and I put in thousands of hours of practice and it showed in our razor sharp skills. A teacher with a passion for ping pong, number three. Chances are you can name a teacher who loves their subject. When they're all fired up about sharing their knowledge or know how to make you laugh as you learn, their enthusiasm is infectious and before you know it, you're enjoying it as much as they are. At school, Mr Charters was a good teacher, but it was his passion for sport that had the biggest impact on me. He had bright eyes, a black beard and a wonderful way of encouraging you to give it your all. Life is about being the best you can possibly be, he said. While he ran almost all the after school clubs, it was table tennis that meant the most to him. He also happened to be one of the nation's top coaches and a talent scout on the lookout for players with potential to learn and improve. It meant that he encouraged anyone who showed the slightest interest in the sport to check out the local table tennis club. Its name was Amiga. Number four, the local club. Imagine a super exclusive centre for the finest table tennis players in the country. Then forget it. Despite having mega in its title, Amiga was anything but. It was pretty much just a rundown hut with a couple of tables. It was very basic, freezing cold in winter and sweltering in summer, but a magnet for young players like me. Once you had demonstrated that you knew a chop from a forehand slice, technical table tennis shots rather than the cuts of raw meat, in case you were concerned, you would be granted the ultimate honour, a key to Amiga. This wasn't just any key, but one that opened the door day or night to the table tennis palace. The palace, read, shack of my hometown. I'd like to say I had the honour of being the only key holder, but in reality, most of the kids in the streets around mine also had one. As a result, the local area began to boast an unusually high number of prize winning young table tennis players. Now, here's something to consider. When I played table tennis for England, many of the top players in the country, men and women, came from my street in Reading. So he's local, this guy. Not the surrounding area, but my actual street. That's quite weird, don't you think? About as weird as the whole cast of Harry Potter being born in the same cul-de-sac in Chelmsford. Or is it? They weren't, by the way, the Harry Potter cast. I just made that up to illustrate my point. You see, it all comes down to how you become awesome at stuff, which, remember, is what this book is all about. Lots of people seem to think you need to be born with certain gifts or talents. But if that is true, why were so many of the gifted and talented table tennis players born in my ordinary street in Reading? It doesn't make any sense. It only starts to make sense once you realise that it wasn't their gifts or talents that were making all these kids so much better at table tennis than the kids 10 streets away. Instead, it was their access to Amiga, to Mr Charters and all of the hours they spent practising together. Quite simply, the kids 10 streets away didn't do that. Now, table tennis might not be your thing and that's OK. We're all drawn to different interests and hobbies. At the same time, rest assured that this book isn't simply about getting gold medals or excellent gra exam grades. Oh, no. Whether you want to master street magic, pull off awesome skateboard stunts or bake the perfect cupcake, knowing that you don't have to be born gifted at these things to be good at them really is important. Once you know that you can develop your skills with practice, determination and this one is optional, an annoyingly competitive older brother, it just makes a whole lot more sense to give something a try. So whatever you want to become awesome at, this book is here with strategies, hints and tips to fulfilling your potential and making it happen. So here's your list of dreams. Would you like to do any of these things? Music, skateboarding, maths, physics, dog grooming, tennis, computer hacking, heart surgery, teaching, chess, TV presenting, becoming prime minister, writing, deep sea diving, cooking, archaeology, playing the piano, football, plumbing, blogging, music. All you have to do is take one step at a time, beginning by turning the page. And that, Braywick, is what we'll do tomorrow.